Right, so I'm here with, uh, well, legendary commentator, I suppose, really, uh, Toby Moody. So, uh, Toby, you've commentated on MotoGP, BSB, uh, BTCC as well, a lot of acronyms, but um, what's your plan for 2015? Doing lots of stuff behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see, but I've got something lined up, just got to dot the I's, cross the T's, so we should know in the next few weeks. Sure, right, okay. Uh, now, MotoGP 2015, it's really sort of kicked off in style. The Ducatis are up there battling with the, the likes of Yamaha and also Honda as well. So what do you think the, what do you think of the resurgence of the Italian mark? Well, it's also the resurgence of Valentino. Uh, some would say he never went away. He did go away. He, he had a confidence knock when he was at Ducati for those two years, but now he's into his second year back on a Yamaha. Um, and a second year with his with his engineer, uh, he rode very very well. Did Valentino? You got to remember that Ducati are not necessarily playing at the same level playing field as a factory bike because they got the open bike, so they got more fuel. They've got <clears throat> different uh, 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 softer tires, so it is a bit skewed. But that fuel. Uh, regulation has been taken away so they're back to 22 litres after those two podiums that they had uh, in Qatar and a podium they had a couple of years ago as well so that was all written in the rules and everybody knew once they had three dry weather podiums that things would change so um, it is a resurgence Ducati have always gone well at Qatar don't forget that you know Stoner Stoner always went well at Qatar Stoner always went well everywhere didn't he but Let's see this weekend, you know, one swallow does not make a summer. Same regarding Vettel winning in Malaysia. Let's just see what happens. There's a long way to go. Um, but Ducati are more there than they were not there. Uh, hardly difficult as well. Now that Gigi Delinia has got his, got his paws into the design office and actually got something coming through. So it will be interested. It needed it. We don't want Mark winning every race, do we? <laughs> But look at it another way. If, if Mark had not run on at the first corner in Qatar, he would have been on the podium without a doubt. He could well have won it. So maybe we were a little bit skewed with what we saw. We will never know. Yeah. We will never know. But at the end of the day, Valentino didn't go off at the first corner and nor did Dovi and Iannone. So, you know, it all it all levels out. To finish first, first you have to not go off at the first corner, do you? <laughs> so <laughs> so um, we shall see. Mark with his mistake that he had at that first corner will have thought ah yeah stop being cocky here there's a point at which everybody does something silly in any form of sport or life and they go ah pushed it too far as keki rosberg used to say um when everything is going really really well you relax and then you have a biggie and he had the most mother and father ginormous accident when he was testing in Rio one year 84 85 off the top of my head and he had a monumental accident and it just made him realize you know stop being cocky yeah. stop being too too bad Mark didn't have an accident but well he has had some other accidents they've all had an accident sooner or later where it goes so Mark I think will could possibly win the next half a dozen races yeah. straight off the bat straight off the bat it's still arguably the best bike. Still, yeah, exactly. It's still unpredictable as well. That's that's the main thing. Yeah, and instead of Yamaha versus Honda, as you said at the top of the conversation, it's Ducati are in there as well, yeah. and that's what the championship needs. And then going forward, you know, 2017 with other rules that are cooking and, and going to change, then other things should level out as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, Honda as well. Um, Pedroza, a bit of a shame regarding the, uh, the sort of arm situation. Of course, I armor in to replace him for Texas. Um, so, um, what's, what's your sort of insight on on Pedroza's sort of injury? Really, obviously, he's got to recuperate and recover. Yeah, he he said, "Oh, I only discovered it once I did the race. I could only discover it because it was a proper race conditions." And you think. I think a few people are a bit annoyed with him because he obviously knew that something was up and then now it's too late. You know, he's had six months off, not six months off, you know what I mean, five months off. And and only now he said, oh yeah, but I need another six weeks off because i got to do my arm. I think a few people are a bit annoyed about that. Having said that, he's never going to win a world championship. I said to, to people in the paddock, I forget when it was, about 07, he's never going to win a world championship in the big class um, and he hasn't and he won't because he's lost this year already um, 
sometimes it just comes to the end of, a, of your course. I mean, he, he, what did he do? He joined Repsol Honda MotoGP in 06, so it's what, his, it's his 10th season. Ten, yeah, lovely. his 10th season. And he's won lots of races. He's had a huge amount of accidents and he's hurt himself a lot. And it's, it's a bit sad that he hasn't won a championship, but it's never fair, is it? No, it is not. Uh, you're here at the WEC this weekend then, so you just, obviously as a guest of the BRDC, you're just displaying your support of it for the sort of show that's going on? Uh, yes, there is that. I hadn't thought of it that way. I, I love sports cars. I've always loved sports cars. I'm a big supporter of Silverstone. Derek Warwick very kindly gave me and my wife a couple of tickets, which he didn't have to do, but he, he did. That's very kind of him. I've got lots of friends here. Uh, Anthony, Mark, uh, Alan McNish, uh, a few other people that I've worked with who are not necessarily well known to the public, a few friends around in the paddock, only live an hour away, so we've come along. It's a beautiful day. It's lovely, isn't it's it? It's absolutely stunning. Silverstone at its best. I've caught up with some people. I'd like to go out and see some see some cars on the racetrack, so I'll, I'll walk around a complete lap of the circuit and see some uh, see the cars close up, as it were, around the corners. Um, and then I'll bimble home at about four o'clock. <laughs> Let the dogs out. <laughs> Not bad going at all. Well, I'll leave you to that. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you back on the box in the future. Thank you very much. And I